I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't go into the premiere of Osama Sentai King Oger with super high expectations. I'm not sure if it's because I wasn't loving the suits, or the concepts, or the visuals with all the CG backgrounds, or maybe it's just because I've grown attached to Dawn Brothers, but it doesn't really matter now because after watching this episode, I now think this is one of the greatest Super Sentai premieres I've ever seen. Hello everyone, it's Thomas Jujubee, and today I'm going to talk about why the first episode of King Oger absolutely blew me away and why now I'm super excited for this show. As usual, this video will contain spoilers, so be sure to let me know what you thought of the premiere down in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but now let's get into mine. <laughs> Honestly, just a few seconds into the episode, I was already really excited. The exposition of the ancient warriors turning into kings was super badass, but I really wasn't expecting to see one of our upcoming mecha combos debuting in this little flashback sequence. It took me really off guard, and it was a really pleasant surprise. Then we get into the formation of the five kingdoms, which is a cool visual thing, but what I really like is it's set up when we actually travel to those kingdoms, and this is where I really got hooked on the premise. I love world building, and the introduction to all these characters is world building on a completely different level for Super Sentai. Because each of the rangers rules different kingdoms, each introduction feels like we're stepping into another world from a completely different show. Thanks to the big LED screens they're using for a lot of the back backdrops of this season. Each location looks entirely different from the other, but there are also little things that make them feel different, like how all the civilians dress differently, even the music totally changes. So when they all unite together at Shugatum, it almost feels like this big crossover event, like Avengers or Justice League. We get to see all these different characters that had their own adventures in their separate worlds, and now we see them join forces on screen together to save the world from an even greater threat. The difference is, this is the first episode of a Ascent so this is our first time seeing all of these characters, so I guess it's more like a Rise of the Guardians in that sense. That's just introducing our main characters of a Sentai show like any other Sentai show, but it fills out the world in such an excellent way. Uh, while I'm making random DreamWorks references, I'm really reminded of How to Train Your Dragon with like all the bug robots helping out around the kingdom with daily tasks. I didn't think we would get so many little bug friends beyond just the toys, and I think this is really cute. It really helps to sell the skin of the world. In addition to the character introductions that I was originally talking about, that is super awesome. Even giving them all their own servants that they kind of briefly chat with and that we see walking with them and going into the castle with them just makes it all feel more realistic. It really feels like these are all different countries with their own customs and their own people that work alongside them. It's a stupid small thing, but seeing all the servants stand next to each other or hold the Oja Calibers or stand next to the rangers as they're transforming puts a unique perspective on this universe. It makes the King Ogers feel like an everyday occurrence, but it also adds this grandiose to the universe of like the rulers of this earth uniting. Those first shots of the three transforming has got to be one of my favorite shots in Sentai because they're transforming in front of this whole army at their disposal. The monsters aren't the only ones with hordes of troops. The heroes have their own too, and I really love that. I do wish they actually fought. We don't really see any of that. They're just kind of there in the background. I really hope we get some kind of mass produced ranger thing for them all to use? That idea could honestly make this one of my favorite seasons, but that's just speculation. As for the episode itself, the characters themselves, I don't really have much to say about most of them with the information from this episode. I think I'll end up liking Kaguragi a lot because he had a fun personality. For the others, I think it's hilarious how the only part you ever see of Rita is her eye. I'm looking forward to the inevitable arguments with Himeno. They seem like they'll clash a lot. I was quite surprised by how much relevance Yanma had to the episode though. I figured we'd focus on the Reds because, you know, it's the first episode. But no, he gets a, like, a different kind of conflict going on. I thought it was interesting our first time seeing him with the others is stand sitting in opposition to Racules. It makes him the second most intriguing of the Rangers in my opinion since we later learned that he was totally right in not wanting to trust Racules. So I'm super excited to see what his interactions with Gira are gonna be because the way I see it, this is kind of what he was looking for. 
he didn't want to follow Rakules because he thought he just wanted power, oops, looks like he was right. The power of the Shu Gods had given a different guy the power to be the leader, and I mean, Yanma can't really argue with that, and he's clearly worthy, so. I do wish he actually appeared transformed, though, maybe when he was trying to unlock God Kuagata, because everyone else appears transformed, and it's just kind of weird he doesn't. But hey, next episode's all about him, it seems, so I guess it balances out. My favorite part of this episode, though, was one million percent an excellent first showing from Gira as Kuagata Oger. I didn't think much of him at first when he was playing with the kids and went up to the castle to become the Red Ranger. It felt like pretty standard Red Ranger stuff. What really stole my attention was the confrontation with Rakules and this insane conflict that he started with Gira. I didn't think they'd give Rakules this twisted justice personality, and I was genuinely shocked when he revealed that this was all a ploy to gain the powers of the other kingdoms, and in the middle of the invasion of his own kingdom, he just sits up in his big tower, perfectly safe, sips on his cup of piss, and he just plots to invade the other kingdom because Blue didn't want to join forces. He's straight up a villain, more diabolical than the actual monsters, because they're just monsters for now. And I love that. He tells Gira that he's opposing the justice of the country, so he genuinely seems to believe in his ideals. But then, since Gira always pretends to be the bad guy when he plays games, as they showed in the beginning, he, like, really embraces that here, and he gives it this incredibly interesting twist, where he says, if your justice is letting the citizens of your country die, then I'm the king of evil that opposes your justice, but in this case, being evil is saving people and all that, and that's such a clever yet badass way to set up this little rivalry. I was really cheering for Gero when he stole Rakules' outfit to complete his look and the Oja Caliber in order to become the Red Ranger. It was such a satisfying origin story. And what makes me love this even more is that there's gonna be some repercussions to it. Even though Gira is rightfully a King Oger and he saved the country, he's now an enemy of the state because, I mean, he did steal the king's property and he pointed his weapon at him and he declared himself the king of evil, so... Oops. It's this level of nuance I wasn't expecting from the dynamic of these two characters, and I really can't wait to see if it'll play into the overall themes of the show, or at the very least, I hope it'll be a really cool rivalry. I don't want to really get into spoilers here, but we do know there's some things on the horizon that will be related to Rakules, so I'm really excited to see how that will play out. Mainly, I'm excited to see, like, what's going on here? Like, does Gira have royal blood, and that's just why he's able to use the sword? They kind of say that he's gonna be the king by the end of the show, so I'm kind of interested to see if Rakules is just going to accept him as the red at a certain point throughout the show, but only at the very, very end does he let him be the king, or is Rakules going to be an antagonist for like most of the season? We really have no idea at this point, so that's definitely the thing I'm most interested in right now. But now it's time to talk about the big things, the visuals. My goodness, this show is stunning to look at. Well, I'm still not a huge fan of the suits. I just really wish they had some more silver or gold to break them up because right now they kind of look a little too plain for my taste. The mantle pieces are awesome though. I love stuff like that and it looks incredible in the fights and I love how it flaps out during the transformation sequence. It looks so good. The transformations are also simple, but it works much better for me in this case. I don't know why. I just think putting them in this little crystal and then shattering it with the respective bugs, sending the cape flowing in the and in completing the armor is a pretty fantastic visual. The sword as the transformation device is also one of my favorite parts of the aesthetics. I actually like the super long over the top transformation sequence where you have to flip all the switches. I think it's a really cool build up to a really, really cool jingle. The voice of this thing is top tier. It says like funny bug names, but I, I quite like that. My favorite thing might be the King Oger robot though. I do think it's weird that it has the exact same name as the team, but other than that, I think it's awesome. I love how it's a combination of 10 robots, but it creates this really cohesive yet wildly unique silhouette for a robot. The piloting mechanism is super cool. Initially, I was kind of worried only Red would be piloting it, but we have images that the others will be piloting it in the future. So that worry is gone. Now I'm fully embracing this awesome like mecha exoskeleton with a sword. The Gatai sequence is so good, especially in this episode with the 
the theme song playing over it, and especially with that incredible fight scene to go with it. Brief side note, I like the theme song. It's not amazing, it's, it's serviceable though. Now, if everything else I've been talking about didn't make this episode a great start to the season, then these fight scenes definitely do. They are filled with so much dynamic movement I've never seen in a Toei Tokusatsu production. The shot compositions with all the special effects and the practical elements and all of it is so unimaginably impressive. It 100% captures the incredible scale of this invasion and the dire need for the King Ogres. I think it's impossible to watch this and not get excited. It's like so impressive to look at. Oh, they're gonna do this thing. Oh, oh my god! Um, oh, no, I did not touch it at all. Attack on Titan! Attack on This is Lady Attack on Titan, you can't stop me. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in. <gasps> I'm in. The world is being destroyed! What the fuck? Oh my, oh my god! Oh. I didn't know. <gasps> yes! Jet thrusters! <gasps> spider dick. <laughs> the spider man! The spider man! <laughs> the spider man webbing in. The ants. Oh, that was hot. Holy sh! Oh. I'm so hyped, guys. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm sold. <laughs> the CG environments are still kind of a bit weird, but like then all the suits are real in the CG environments, so I think it works for now. Especially in the King Odra fight, which continues that energy by using this unique medieval battleground that gets torn apart. You can see the castle in the background because of the LED technology. From start to finish, this first episode of Osama Sentai King Ogre is a blast. Maybe that's because I went into it with pretty much zero expectations. I was just like, ah, let's see what this is. But now I am so looking forward to seeing what adventures the King of Evil and his future comrades are going to be taking us on. Remember to let me know what you thought of the episode down in the comments. Subscribe to hear my thoughts on future episodes and check out my Patreon to watch my next videos early. And I hope to see you next time.